Hello, my name is Tony Botting, and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video, we'll be discussing how to modify CAD geometry, in particular framework, for shell elements. Okay, so here we are looking at an I beam with non constant cross section. Now, you might have a lot of these, maybe, you know, hundreds of feet long, and um, if you just hit the mesh button, it's likely to bring your PC to its knees. Um, we could use, in this case, we cannot use the beam functionality because the cross section is not constant, as you can see. Uh, so what we'll do is a technique I call CAD conditioning and what we'll do, the strategy here is to make three surface bodies and mesh them with shell elements. So we'll show how to do that. Okay, so you'll also be learning about extend and split line functionality. Uh, the first thing I recommend that we do here is make a backup, which is obvious. And also I recommend making an FEA configuration. I've already got one here. I'll go ahead and make a new one. And then go through here. We're going to make surface bodies. Uh, there are some fillets in here and rounds. And I recommend suppressing those features as necessary to simplify. So I'll just find them in the tree here. There's an internal fillet and external round. And we'll suppress those on this new configuration. And it looks like there's a set here. Number four, I'll suppress those. Okay, so we've got some bodies we can use. And the strategy here is going to be t to take the upper and lower surfaces of the flanges and offset them by half the thickness uh, to the middle. And the same with the web, we'll offset it to half the thickness. And then we'll inspect the surfaces to make sure they connect to other surfaces. Okay, so we'll get the uh, surface tools. Here, I'll pull this up to the better part of the screen here. So we're going to do an offset by half the thickness. Again, shell elements um, understand that they are at the middle or mid-plane. And this defaults to being above the surface. So we'll click it around the other way or reverse the direction. You can barely see the dotted lines there. And uh, let's leave that one there. We'll do the same for the bottom surface. And the web happens to be the same thickness. Put them to the middle. Okay, now hopefully you can see the uh, blue lines here in the middle of the structure. Those are the surfaces that I just created. Also in the uh, SolidWorks Feature Manager, you'll see the solid bodies. There's one and three new surface bodies. I'm going to temporarily delete the body, put in a delete feature because we don't need that anymore. And notice what we have here are an issue that arises with uh, these types of operations as you get these offsets and gaps, and we need to close those gaps. Okay, so we're going to extend uh, the edges of this web surface up to the flange surface, and there's an extend function for that. I'm going to use the up to surface option here, and hopefully you can see that extension. And we'll do the same on the bottom of the web there. Extend that surface up to this bottom one. All right, so we've got our web surface extended to meet the flange surfaces. Um, what you'll notice here is the top surface there on the flange is continuous, and we need to actually split that to ensure that the nodes connect, and I'll show what that means here in a moment. So I'll just go ahead and open a sketch here and we're going to copy an edge of the web there. Uh, let me get my sketch toolbar out. And you can see that copied the edge up here. Now we're going to do an insert split line. Insert curve split line is the command. And we're going to split with a projection this top flange and the bottom flange with that black line. Okay, now we've split the flanges into two pieces. This helps the mesher a lot, and so we'll show what the mesh looks like here in just a moment. Okay, so we've done what I call a, a CAD conditioning exercise. Uh, we've put in a, a delete feature to delete the solids. So when we, when we define a um, simulation study, it won't find that solid and try to mesh it with solid elements. 
Okay, so we'll go in here and define a study, simulation study. I'll just leave it at study one static, and this is just a mes meshing exercise. Uh, we need to go ahead and declare these surface bodies. Notice the thickness is not defined. Uh, that happens to be 0.394, so I'll, I'll select all of those, edit the definition on them, and we'll use the thin formulation here, and they're 0.394. And I'm also going to need a material for those. We'll just use it to steel. We we'll use the alloy steel here. And we have green check marks on those surfaces indicated they've been uh, defined for a material and a thickness. So we'll get, go ahead now and uh, run the mesher. Create the mesh. We'll just let the default rip and see what we get. Now I'll zoom in here on the junctions, and this is what you need to pay attention to, where the vertices of elements on one surface, or the corner of the elements on one surface, meet the corners of elements or vertices of elements on another surface, that's what's going on there, is the nodes are connecting, if you're seeing that. Uh, if you're not seeing that, then the nodes won't connect. And, and the reason that happened here is because of the split line we put in there earlier. Um, if you don't put in the split line, there's a chance the nodes will not connect, and you'll have to put in a contact set in there to define that. And of course, what we're seeing here is the shell surface directions are showing up. Uh, the bottom is orange color, and you can flip those if you want to look at the stress results. You can do that after the analysis as well. So I want to also post an image here of what it might look like, or what the mesh like might look like. Uh, if the nodes do not match at the junctions. And here you can see this is uh, two pipe components that uh, where the nodes did not match, meaning the vertices of elements at the junction interface are not connected. And you can clearly see that on the uh, junction line there, separating the two pipes. So there's a workaround. You can put contact sets in there, but to avoid the contact sets, the uh, split line seems to help a lot in this manner. Here are some other cases you might run into, an I-beam stiffener and plates assembly. You can see the plates on top, on top of the flange of the I-beam there. And if we look at the actual mid-surfaces, you can see the locations they're not going to be hitting one another. So there's a couple of candidates that we've come up with that you can handle this type of situation. Here the first mid-surface candidate shows the blue dashed line. Uh, that's another surface in there that you could actually put splits along the longitudinal. Uh, that would be into the plane of the monitor here. Uh, you put some split lines and define a double up thickness on the blue dashed surface representation there. And of course we've extended the mid surfaces of the web, or I should say the mid surface of the web, up to hit that and put a split line there of course. Now the, the consequence of this is the bending stiffness is a little bit higher than actual, but in the big picture if you have a very huge structure, uh, that bending stiffness is not going to matter too much. Here's a second mid-surfacing candidate where we've left the mid-surfaces where they should be in each respective part or component in the assembly, and we've inserted some blue lines there to represent uh, shell elements running the length of the plate and the beam, and you'll need to put in some split lines there between the red dashed lines and the blue lines uh, to ensure that the nodes connect or the nodes merge between all the shell elements. It's a little more work, but it's, it's another way to do it. This is a tubular and I-beam structure from the help manual. You might be able to do this with the beam functionality in simulation, certainly. Uh, also, you can use shells, and I'll go ahead and show an image here. And this image shows the equivalent surface geometry in red lines there, and the actual solid geometry is the gray. And you'll need to ensure there's a split line there on the end of the I-beam up to the tube. You can split the surface with the profile of the end of the I-beam surface geometry. So there's some methods you can use and uh, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you soon. In this video we discussed methods to modify CAD geometry to accept shell elements.